Hello everyone, I'm Professor of Money Big Trading. Today, June 2nd, 2024, let's talk about IELTS ASCO MTAFI Plus Key True the Clinical Trial Readout Update. So, really quick disclaimer currently hold IELTS stocks and loan co options. Do not represent any pharmaceutical company. Any medical questions, please consult your own doctors. Also, not financial advisors, please invest at your own risks. So, looking at the daily chart IELTS on the left, it's continued to this terrible, terrible downtrend. And XBI, the small tech ETF, is no longer an excuse. XBI actually has been in the range bound this week, on uh, the past three, four days, while Alphans just breaking the 200 day EMA at $10 and continue to trend lower, which is a total disaster after this amazing and really, really powerful treatment being approved for melanoma patients. And right now, already give up all the post approval gains and literally still hanging there, right? So, really bad price action. Let's take a look what's going on. Uh, so we already mentioned all this terminology in two videos ago, so feel free to take a look at the video on the upper right corner. And really quick, in the last video, again, in the upper right corner of the link, uh, we already talked about how good this data is uh, updated in uh, well, last week for this IELTS COM202 Phase 2 trial, uh, 22 patients using MTAV plus Keytruda. So on May 31st at the ASCO, oral conference meeting, uh, they actually unveil more details, uh, which looks pretty exciting and pretty positive to me. Uh, last time we mentioned the overall response rate uh, is 64%. However, there are two patients actually drop because of the Keytruda. Um, so if we include or exclude these two patients, and recalculated this overall response rate because this two patient has uh, their drop off is due to Keytruda, nothing about MTAV V. So let's say we exclude them, right? So to recalculate this overall response rate, and we will get an ORR to seventy one percent, which is like really great compared to the existing standard of treatment uh, O plus Y, which is forty eight percent, or Keytruda itself was uh, a third thirty four percent, right? And also for the complete response rate, uh, the previous last week data was 32%. However, and then feel more detail is the complete response rate should be 39%. Why? Because there are actually two patients confirmed they have complete response after the data cutoff in April 2023. Uh, sorry, April 2024. So this number also telling me this is a very strong positive number, plus the duration is so long over time. So that is telling me this is really powerful. And also in the conference, uh, there's a set of a meeting called Key Opinion Leader, KOL, panel discussion with uh, these three doctors from three different um, ATC or hospital that have been using IELTS and TAVI to treat patients. Um, so their discussion is pretty interesting. Uh, we'll put the link down below um, so you can also listen to it. It's about 45 minutes. Uh, but in case you don't have time, here's the quick highlight. The first, Dr. Lawrence from the Massachusetts General Hospital. He said the center can take about four to five patients per month, and they have been already accepting that many patients and treating that many patients with MTAV. However, they cannot take any more patients because just the limitation of the number of beds at their hospital. Otherwise, they would like to take more, which sounds pretty amazing. And based on this number, we can estimate about top 10 to 20 ATC that IOFENS showed to us. Uh, I look at it, I look at them. They probably have the similar capacity uh, as Dr. Lawrence um, Massachusetts General Hospital. So that pretty much tell me very likely IOFENS will hit 500 patients, 500 plus patients at the end of this year with this speed. So that is a very positive news to me in this KO panel that at least what I got. And also, the other KOL said uh, they also started doing MTAV outpatient already. So that's also a really big news to me. Like, okay, um, it seems like they're pretty open to MTAV and try to introduce MTAV as early as possible instead of using the last line treatment. So that will also increase the number of patients being enrolled and being referred and being uh, using MTAV treatment. So that's also a pretty big plus to me uh, when I heard it. Uh, the other thing is they said the enrollment time depends on the insurance payer, uh, but mostly they don't have any problem with the private insurance. Uh, that's also really good news uh, when I heard it. Uh, it sounds like 
I guess T cell therapy has paved the way in blood cancer, and now this MTAV is just doing pretty smoothly in private insurance. So that's great news. Uh, the other information we learned from the corporate representation or presentation deck from Alphans is they provided this number. Um, basically, fifty-five percent of the insurance uh, pay, um, sorry patients are from commercial insurance. So the other 36% are from Medicare and Medicaid. So remember in the last video, we estimated based on the age of the patients using NTAV plus Keytruda in this phase two trial, we estimated 25 to 33% patients are under Medicaid or Medicare. Um, so I guess her estimate is not too far off uh, based on my pharma experience, uh, which is not too far, which they provided 36%, so slightly underestimated, but that's okay. Uh, so it looks to me 55% of these inpatients will pay pretty much the full rate, $515,000 on NTAV plus around 100K or 90K um, per Lucan. Um, so that part, we can estimate revenue pretty well. However, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, if this 36% of patients are using Medicare or Medicaid, their average uh, sales price of NTAV will be lower because this government either federal or state government-based insurance plans, they will ask for a discount from IELTS, and we don't know what, how much discount, and I'm sure they're still under negotiation since this drug just got approved about three months ago, and government worldwide, not just US, move usually pretty slowly. Uh, so I'm sure even IELTS hasn't got a full picture of how much discount they have to give. Um, state by state. So I guess we just have to wait for the August revenue guidance uh, in an earning call from IELTS and we'll have a better idea uh, what kind of revenue numbers we're looking at uh, for the 2024 and also 2025 onward uh, based on the average sales price um, they probably will get internally and share with us in terms of the revenue numbers. Uh, we just have to see. Uh, the other thing that's kind of shocking to a lot of people in the IELTS investor community is Dr. Warner's comment. Uh, so remember we used her video in the last video to talk about like how positive MTAV is and she has been pretty friendly and positive about MTAV and keep tweeting about MTAV and making videos and talk about MTAV in presentation in a positive tone. However, in this CEO, she tweeted when she saw the IELTS presentation with many negative words on his tweet, on her tweet, sorry. Um, she mentioned toxic, death, delays, all those negative tone, which kind of puzzles me, like what happened? What's the drastic um, change of opinion? I, I do get her point that um, she thinks tail is not ready for the first line therapy, but all of a sudden all those negative words uh, made me feel like a little biased. So I quickly follow up with her is like, hey, uh, what you said, Right, like yes, Teal's not ready for the first line treatment because it takes time to manufacture and it needs surgery to take out tumor. Uh, so it's not ready for completely outpatient therapy. And also it really has a it has to introduce IL2, which brings a lot of side effect to patients. Right. But my question is if you introduce Teal to first line treatment, where most of the melanoma patients are healthier. Right. Wouldn't TIL be more effective and just be less more risky uh, compared to TIL in the late last line treatment for melanoma? Uh, she said maybe, possibly, uh, but the risk is still high even on these healthy patients. Also, she will continue to recommend TIL um, right after the progression of the uh, frontline treatment, uh, not only just in very late last line uh, patients. So we think for some reason, I don't know what happened, like, her tone sounds very negative all of a sudden, but I still think she will continue to advocate MTAV, um, not as a first line treatment, but as a second line or second plus line treatment. So, yeah, I don't know what kind of drama is going on, to be honest, but it sounds like she's still supportive. And in general, the KOs are also pretty positive about IELTS and MTAV. Uh, so really quick conclusion. So we think doctors will continue to use MTAV as a second line treatment or second plus line treatment. Uh, we see some Wall Street analysts report and some doctors, including Dr. Warner herself, uh, think this phase two trial, Alphans COM202, doesn't have enough patient count 
currently 22, 23 uh, patient, they think it has to be 50 plus. So, okay, I guess our fences need to follow up with more data points and convince the medical community that, yeah, this NTAV plus Keytruda is legit and really be the standard treatment with more patient counts. So we'll probably see it, I don't know, second half this year, first half next year. Um, yeah, just have to wait and see. Or even we can ask uh, the IR to follow up like, hey, can you mention in August uh, Q3 earning, like when are we going to see more readouts uh, for this clinical trial, right? And also, based on what we just estimated uh, a few slides ago, we think IELTS should still be able to enroll 500 plus patients into the year end. Uh, however, like we mentioned two, three slides ago, revenues calculation remains difficult because we just don't know what kind of discount they're gonna give out for Medicare and Medicaid uh, insurance plan. Uh, we will need the revenue guidance in the August earning call to update our price target trajectory. Uh, right now, I think even we update it, it's probably not gonna be very meaningful because we just don't know how much they're gonna charge. Uh, for the Medicaid and Medicaid insurance plan again. Um, I cannot say too much about this at this point, but just look it around, and you'll probably know that several big pharma are uh, not doing very good uh, at the ASCO news front. Uh, so we still think long-term acquisition in the next 12 to 24 months is highly likely for IFNs, like we mentioned last video. Uh, short term, we just have to see any insiders start to buy more IFN stocks probably in the next two weeks. Uh, and whether more funds um, will start to add more IELTS as well. So uh, if any sort of insider or large fund adding, uh, that probably will start to put more support uh, for the IELTS stock price. And also don't forget the inflation is still a big problem like we mentioned in the previous video. So the link video will be the upper right corner. Uh, make sure to follow us on Money Pick Trading. And if you really like our content, uh, make sure to Check us out on www.moneypicktrain.com. We cover way more stock than elephants, more biotech stock, which is about 35% of our portfolio. We also invest pretty heavily in AI and tech stocks, and we also cover a lot in the Discord community as well. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit Money Pick Trading. And make sure to like this video. Any question, feel free to ask down below. Thank you. Bye bye.